welcome to the Questionnaires podcast, where each week we source the best questions from Yahoo Answers and attempt to provide the best advice from... Why isn't there an option to shoplift online? Two. Is the most unhelpful thing in the world a toddler trying to be helpful? We're here to prove that every question deserves an answer. Joined with me this week, as always, is Marcus. Hello, Tom. And Damien. Let me help you with introducing the podcast, Tom. I am a toddler. (laughs) A toddler would be probably (laughs) marginally worse than what I already have to deal with with you two boys. So I would take you two (laughs) over the top if I could say. Ouchiwawa. No, no, no. It's it's I'm not gonna throw shade you guys say it's a happy day it's uh episode 200 can you believe we made it here boys um we're, we're like we're like robin williams in that movie bicentennial man we made it 200 years baby <laughs> I, I doth protest, gentlemen. Ooh. I want to say that I think I was thinking about this. I think this 200th episode is a lie. Oh no! So Why? only because we may have released 200 episodes, but there was mm. one episode of the Questionnaires podcast where we didn't have a chance to record, so we just re-released an old podcast episode from an old podcast we did. Oh. So I oh. think technically this is episode 199. So wow. for those people listening. Who had their stream? Take your streamers down. Unpop your party poppers. <laughs> put the champagne back on ice. Yep. This is not the two hundredth episode. This is a lie. Maybe wow. it's just a party pooper, isn't he, Tom? Isn't he? So He's just is, no fun. Does that mean we've only done that once? I thought we might have done it more than once. So it could be like yeah. I, think I, think we've done it times, Damien. I don't know, man. We, we love so, recycling. Uh, look, look. This is a very green podcast. We recycle content all the time, and it's very good yeah. for the environment. That's true. That's true. Well, yeah. look. Okay. Well, then, in that case, let's just not make a big deal about it it's just sort of like when you you turn a big milestone age that you're not happy about so you just don't even want to mention it we can do the same for the 200th yeah. if you want just let it pass by <laughs> that's right <laughs> i like i like let's just let it slide on slide on by but anyway how have you guys been going this week i know it's been a bit a bit of a strange week but what's been going on yeah look things have been going well um i've finally decided to pr- i've putting off the procrastination of mowing the lawn, which was waist height in my backyard. So <laughs> I made Jeez. sure I did that yesterday. <laughs> you, you, were like, you were like Indiana Jones going through that, man, weren't you? Like, you Pretty you were finding strange artifacts. Yeah. I was going to yeah. say, did you go the, the predator out and pop the shirt off with a machete, just cutting through tundra as you <laughs> <laughs> cut through all the, the plants in your garden? Damien, if you know me, anytime I do any yard work, the shirt comes off. I'm always I'm always bare chesting, screaming screaming through the backyard. Of course. Of course. I, I'd pay good... I'd pay I wish I could still be there. But um, other than that, it's been good. I've tried to get back into a little bit of like fitness things. I've been uh, doing some runs in the morning, which is um, which is a good way to start the day, I will say, going for a run at 6 a.m. Um, it is pitch black dark. It feels like you're running in the middle of the night, but you just feel so accomplished by the time the, uh, you finish and you start your day. So that's been good for me, at least. Yeah. How do you feel when you wake up in the morning? Do you, do you always say to yourself, Fuck! I can't be fucked doing this run. Is that is that a thing? Like, uh, am I the only one that actually like feels that? Like like I just can't get past that motivational hurdle. It's the hardest part is getting out of out of bed. But the way I see it is like every if you start your day with like a small victory, you're gonna set your set the mood for your day and have little victories along the way. So you're making a good decision the first thing. It leads on to more good decisions down down the track. Mm. By having that bad decision and saying like no, nah, I'm not gonna do it, it sort of sets sets you up for a bit of failure. So that's the way I look at it at least. But yeah. Yeah, look, it's not not the best thing, but I feel good at, at the end of it at least. See, you, you said you set yourself up for like you don't if you if you say no to doing it, you're already setting yourself up for failure. But then if I just say to myself, I'm not going to do it and just sleep right through the morning, I've won anyway. Well, look, if, <laughs> that's what I hear. That's what if, I'm hearing, Tom. If that's what you consider a win, you can take my motivation in whichever way makes works for your life, Marcus. So if that's okay with you, that's fine by <laughs> Perfect. me. Perfect. No no runs for me. Damien, how you doing? I'm good. I mean, I've had my uh, had a brush with fame earlier in the week as you guys may be aware oh yeah Um, absolutely and i use that term fame very loosely uh (laughs) for those who might recall last week i shared my pointless afl stats with uh the Mm. our our podcasting community and one of our listeners actually forwarded onto a website that specializes in pointless afl stats and it was received (laughs) very well people were very on board with it which was fun but i will say one of the disconcerting things was so like there were like nice comments where it's like oh we should turn this into a drink game for every time this commentator mm. says that word which i'm like oh that's nice yeah. and some of them are like tagging their friends and like see i told you bruce mcavane is a fucking idiot show this to everybody <laughs> i'm like whoa <laughs> calm down it's not what i'm saying 
Like, yes, sometimes Bruce McAvaney <laughs> reacts to a Dustin Martin handball like it just sa- it just um, solved world hunger. That's yeah, fair. Yeah. He does do that. Yeah. <laughs> but also, it, yeah. it, this dude has been commentating for like 30 plus years and he still has the same enthusiasm he had all those years ago. So I find that sure. pretty, uh, you know, commendable. Yeah, I think we should make it clear that we, we like Bruce. This was That was not an experiment for you to sort of hang shit on, on the man. I think <laughs> we all think he's, um, he's, he's Australia's sweetheart when it comes to commentating. Of course. Have you <laughs> seen the man dance oh, he's, <laughs> he, he's got to be the best dancer yeah yeah that's it <laughs> <laughs> one more time but yeah we we do want to say a big thank you to the listener that um did reach out and then and share that love um amongst the pointless afl statistics community it was great to sort of see it out there it, it had its own like like um visual graph to it as well yeah. like and it was really cool seeing a visual a little visual something it wasn't much it was a little visual something over our words i thought mm. that's a little something that's pretty cool absolutely immortalized but otherwise, Marcus, are you doing well? I am doing pretty well. This morning, actually, I had a bit of an issue. Uh, we, we, my partner and I have recently been getting HelloFresh boxes. Okay. Um, for those who don't know what HelloFresh is, they send you meal pre- prepped and then you just got to cook it up all yourself. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. If you don't know it, look into it yourself. But we, we've uh, we've come across an issue where one delivery driver from HelloFresh seems to always po- uh, deliver our box to a house a few streets down. Mm-hmm. Um, like the name of our street and the name of that street are very, very similar. Like, and I can understand why he does it, but he's, it's a really lazy driver that does it. And this morning we looked and we're like, the boxes are there. We're like, fuck, wh- where is this box? Um, and we thought, oh, I was going to go to that house. So we walked around the corner in our like masks and all, saw the box on the doorstep and we're like, do we just go up and take it? Like it's our package. Like, yeah. do they know the, 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 this is this house? So we went up there and I'm like, I wish to take the box. And I'm like, oh, should we, should we knock on the door to let the person know, hey, we're not stealing anything from you mm-hmm. this is ours we're just he's delivered it wrong so that's what i want to raise to you guys if you know a package <laughs> has been delivered to the wrong house but you know where that house is do you think it's okay to go there and the package is still at the front door take it and leave or do you need to knock on the door or window to it's, let that person know you're not stealing their shit <laughs> it's hard because i guess you're not going through their mailbox necessarily you are just going to to their doorstep i mean it's still their property but um i feel like the courteous thing would be to like let them know knock on the door and just say hey look that's my name on there you can see this is my id that says my name i think that's okay to sort of i would just sort of try to let them know and if not just take it yeah <laughs> i've just taken it in the past because i my assumption is if the package is this still at the front door they don't know it's there so yeah, no harm yeah. no foul take it a run it's yours anyway well Marcus, yeah i did take it so <laughs> i i feel like it's it's unfortunate for you because we used to live in a our court let's just say if our court was named milton court there was basically a court down like the next court <laughs> over that was called molten court and it was <laughs> it was basically like one letter is different <laughs> from our court names. Now you've moved to a place that's pretty much the exact same situation. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 good fun. Like at least I know if any package goes missing, I know where to try first. Yeah, I'm like ah, yeah. oh, I'll see if they've delivered it there. But the best part about it getting delivered to the wrong place is we always complain to HelloFresh and they always give us a free box after. They they realize like oh we've delivered to the wrong one here. I have another free box. Like sweet. So we just get another free box on the house. So just le- let them keep making mistakes. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't mind that much. All right, well, speaking of mistakes, let's find out what mistakes people have made on, <laughs> in their lives and posted them to the website Yahoo Answers, which is how the show works, Sorry. which is what the show's all about. Sorry. Um, how the show works is we choose a question from the website. We provide advice to try and help these people on their way. That's what it's all about. And we've done it 199 or 198 times. Who knows how many times? But the other thing we do each week is we choose a theme to name the question askers. And it's Damien's theme this week. It is. And I am going with inventions that you personally do not like, only because the invention Ooh. Cordon on doesn't necessarily mean it's a good one so I would love to hear yeah. which, which ones you guys have a beef with. Okay, oh, alright all right. I, want to, I want to go first with this one because I feel like this is something that was this is something that was invented that was tipped to be the future. This was like one of those here we are, this is the new millennium this is what's what the future is going to be all about and this one's going to come from Segway Scooters. <laughs> <laughs> Now, it I don't was need, the future time. It still is. <laughs> I don't need to explain to you what, wh- you know, why I think the Segway is a bad invention. I think just looking at someone riding a Segway is a good enough example to see that they're not a great idea. You just, you can't look cool on a Segway. <laughs> oh, hold and on. I, have, you, have you been on a Segway? I have not been on a Segway. And I know you have done a bit of Segway cruising, Marcus, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I have. I, I did it in Prague. And let me tell you, okay. that was a lot of fun. It's scary, but fun. Yeah. 
you did it in Prague, and like Tom said, it doesn't matter how cool you are. You don't look cool on a Segway. You could be in Marcus. Prague, you could be in Amsterdam, you could be in Rome. You still look like a yeah. loser in, on yeah. any continent in any oh, country. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not about looking cool, all right? You don't get on the Segway and say, hey, look at me, I'm on the Harley. You're not on a Harley, you're on a fucking Segway. Everyone knows that. You accept that when you get on there. It's about speed, all right, to get to where you need to go. <laughs> Wasn't that actually on the waiver that you signed, Marcus? It was like, I agree, if I hurt myself, that's my fault. I agree that I look like a loser as soon as I get on this thing. You have to sign that box, right? That was on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, a little, yeah. little tick box at the bottom. Yeah, you got to do that, yeah. I've heard that, that Prague has got like some of the most attractive people in the world, Marcus. Why would you do that to yourself and look like the biggest idiot in front of the most attractive people in the world? <laughs> because I'm Explain not trying that. to oppress the most attractive people in the world. I was with my now fiancé there, all right? Yeah, yeah. I, don't th- I don't need to like impress good-looking people. And granted, there are good-looking people that are also horrible-looking people, okay? Okay, Tom. Oh, okay. Like, Sorry. like so- any other country. Like any other country, there's a mix. <laughs> Full, there's ugly fuggos. Yeah. I think the final nail in the coffin for the segue was when that cameraman accidentally ran over Usain Bolt with one. I think that was when it was finally over for the segue. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He almost yeah, killed yeah. the fastest man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think that was the point when we segued into hoverboards. It was like, oh, let's just move on and make it like a, a small Christmas gift that we can give to people because <laughs> it's not a... I think also the, the guy that created the segue may have died on a segue. I don't know if I've actually... I haven't he researched did, yeah. that, but I'm pretty sure he did die on a segue accident. I'm pretty sure R.I.P. he did, yeah. I mean, the, anyway. encycl- the human encyclopedia might be able to tell us, but anyway. It wasn't the guy who made it. It was the guy who bought the company. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. even better. <laughs> Either way. Okay. That's a bit dark. Okay. Let's move on. This is coming from Segway. So Segway <laughs> writes, how, how long after you lend something... Can you ask for it back or not ask for it back? If you lend someone something and after they've used it, they inform you that they have it ready for you to pick up, but you never actually go to pick it up. How long before it becomes a lost item or before it no longer the responsibility of theirs, whatever happens to it? I lent an acquaintance an outdoor activity set, which he had used and about a week later said he had it ready for me, whether I can pick it up or not. Since I was always busy, I said I'll eventually get to it. This was about a year and a half ago. I kind of feel like asking for it now since I... I could use it, but I'm not sure if it's proper etiquette for me to do so. Help, segue. I like I, I like this question. I think mm. a year and a half ago is still okay to pick it up, but no one is that busy for a year and a half <laughs> that they kind of yeah. go pick something <laughs> up. I, I refuse to believe that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's clear. It's clear that this it's an outdoor activity. Let, let's just say it's a or, or it's like like you know those hacky sack things that you throw onto the board. Whatever it is, it's a game outside. <laughs> And I'm Totem assuming tennis. that it's, this game it's, outside it's was not cornhole. important. <laughs> cornhole, that's it. That's cornhole, what I was thinking yeah. of. I was thinking of the cornhole. Um, no, nah, it's obviously it wasn't that important to you for a year and a half. But I don't. I think it's fine. I think th- there is no time frame or no time balance for you to say, "Hey, you've got my item. Can I come pick it up?" There is no amount of time that's like, "Oh, that's too long. It's yours now." Like, don't you guys agree with that? Like, it's it's your item still. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's the case. Like, if you're the person knows that it's yours as well between the two of you you know and maybe there could be a situation where it's like a stalemate where it's like i don't want to say the people the person that's got it might be like i use it all the time i actually don't want to mention it because i don't want him to come and pick it up like if you really liked if you yeah. really didn't want something and it was large i'd be like hey come pick it up i'd be r- reminding you come pick it up it's it's taking up too much space but if you really liked it i would not be mentioning it and be like well if he wants it eventually he, he can come back and grab it how long uh let's say you borrow something from somebody how long would you guys have to own it where you would start consider potentially selling it or donating it to like a salvos or something like that? That's a good question. I, never. I, <laughs> so ne- you'd never like, sell it? Wait, is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, wait, if I'm borrowing someone else's item and it's been like, let's say two years and they haven't come and claimed it, I'm not going to be selling it because what if he comes back in year three and say, hey, where's my cornhole set? <laughs> you'd need to be buying a new one from somewhere to try and um, to try and be like, oh, fuck. I need to try and play it off as it was his the whole time time but find a different yeah, version of it exactly i i i'm not gonna do that i'd if anything if he's a good friend i'd go to their house and drop it off at his house so here you go like if i if i don't want it here, just take it this was an interesting question because um my father-in-law had a uh, a crane 
um, on on his property that was used to to build um, a balcony. And the person whose crane it was, like, had ended up le- left it here, and there was a crane in his backyard for a good five years. And we're talking, I'm talking about oh, an what? actual crane, what? boys. A crane, yes, like an actual like like a drivable crane with an arm that goes up, and you can like hang panels Parking and things out. like that. Okay, so in that five years, any use at all, or is it purely just like a metal giraffe just sitting in in his, in his backyard? So no, he he didn't use it at all in the five years like not not for one thing it was just sort of sat there and basically he was trying to get in touch with the person to return 